On this edition of the program, a look at the convenience of Mark Rail as a means of travel to Washington for a day of sightseeing and family fun, including the upcoming Cherry Blossom Festival. We'll introduce you to a long-serving Metro Transit employee dedicated to exceptional customer service. We've got a behind-the-scenes look at a new Mark train yard, which is making a difference in Mark service. And finally, we'll introduce you to two dedicated transit employees who help keep transit moving each and every day. All right here. If you've ever spent a day in our nation's capital, you know there's so much to see and do. With spring and the annual Washington Cherry Blossom activities not far off, Washington, D.C. is the perfect place to visit for a day of family fun. And it's only a marked train ride away. Here with a look at some of the places and sights to see in D.C. on your springtime visit is Cheryl Crow of Cultural Tourism D.C. Welcome to the program. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Okay. Well, we've got the way for people to get there. They can just take the Mark train That's over right. to D.C. So what's to see? What's to see there this spring? We've got lots of things to see in Washington, D.C. As you know, you take the Mark train into Union Station. Starting with Union Station, you can go look at federal monuments. Uh, quick walk over to the U.S. Capitol. The Capitol Visitor Center is fantastic. They've got great cafeteria. You can arrange for a tour there. You can also start at Union Station, um, what is called a D.C. Neighborhood Heritage Trail. It's a walking tour of the 8th Street neighborhood, which is right behind Union Station. And actually, Cultural Tourism D.C. It was founded to create these trails. We've got 15 of them in all the neighborhoods of D.C., so it's free. It's a great way to get to know the city, whether you want to visit U Street, which has the famed Ben's Chili Bowl. Everybody mm -hmm. knows about Ben's Chili Bowl it's since President done that. Exactly. Since <laughs> President Obama visited, their tourists must just roll up to, to Ben's Chili well, Bowl. Yeah, you know, it, even, it, and we, we may get back to more of that. But tell me, to go back a minute, how many people visit D.C. each year? Oh, we get close to 19 million. Wow. And, and, and what's most popular to see in D.C.? Well, obviously, because it's the nation's capital, a lot of people come to see the federal monuments. And the number one monument that they go see, or I should say federal uh, in institution, is the National Museum of American History. Oh. That gets about 7.6 million visitors a year. The Lincoln uh, Memorial gets about 6.2. And so then the numbers go down, but uh, the, the Smithsonian, which is a collection of museums, and the National Zoo, all told, it's about 30 million that go, go to see those sites. Wow, that's impressive. And, and I think it's important to emphasize that these are family opportunities. Absolutely. There's something for the entire family Absolutely. at these locations. Absolutely. The museum's uh, National Air and Space Museum is the second most visited, and of course, lots of children enjoy that. The National Building Museum is really a museum about buildings and architecture, and they always have great activities for students. They actually, two Saturdays ago, had a, a drone demonstration Demonstration, and wow. so a lot of kids went there for that. But you can go to that museum during the week and see school classes there wow. because they just do a lot of things around children. Most of the museums in the city do, though. And of course, there's a, the Children's Museum is moving back to the city as well. So okay. you'll be able to do that. Sounds great. I, I'll take, you mentioned during the week, so I'm going to take another opportunity to plug Mark service. Because yes. you can not only ride Mark on weekends, but also during the week. Absolutely. Uh, okay. Hey, um, you mentioned uh, the museums, uh, the other attractions. Are there discounted packages for a family? Well, what's great about D.C. is most Everything there that a family would want to do is free. That's a great discount. It's that that is that's the <laughs> best discount there is. It is. Um, the the federal monuments and museums are all free. There are some other museums like the museum, which you can do a family uh, package on that. But there's also, as it's the case in most major cities, an entertainment discount book. I've okay. forgotten the name of it. I apologize. Okay. But yes, you can do that. And a lot of times you get a discount if you're military. 
um, for DC residents, we'll get a discount too sometimes. Okay. Um, but it's different packages, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, the last time we were there, the family and I, we did museum, and we did one that I'd, I'd never heard of. Is it the Spy Museum? The Spy Museum. A lot of fun. Yep. You know, when yep. you get to James Bond riding a vehicle and yep. all of that kind of stuff. So so a lot of fun. A lot of stuff to um, do in D.C. Um, so uh, hopefully by the time people watch this, it won't be snowing anymore. So <laughs> so are we looking for, the, are the cherry blossoms going to come out this year? Of course. Of course. That kicks in. Cherry blo the National Cherry Blossom Festival this year is March 20th through April 12th. And it is the celebration of the 600 cherry trees that were given to our country by Japan. It kicks off with a peak tie party on March 19th okay. at the Ronald Reagan Building, mm -hmm. which is a fabulous facility for, for such events. Um, so you can take the train over for that event, too, and, and come back that evening or decide to stay at one of our lovely hotels. We oh. appreciate that, too, because there are hotel packages for the Cherry Blossom Festival, too. Oh, oh that's, that's wonderful. Now, uh, and if you come over, of course, you'll ride Mark over. Of course. Everybody, you heard that. Of you'll course. ride Mark over. Now, there are tour mobiles and things like that that can drive you around once you get there? Yes. From it, Again, you're, you're going to end it. You're going to arrive in D.C. at Union Station, so you'll be able to walk right out front and get on on Old Town Trolley or Big Bus Tours. Um, but I always, I'm, I live there, so I think it's great just to get on the subway and just explore the city. Go to the, plan your trip and just get on the subway and, and go wherever you want to go in D.C. It's so easy. It's a very walkable city. It's one of the most walkable cities in the country. Um, we, we have lots of bicycle. Uh, we have the, the Bike share. We have bike and roll, which is also at Union Station. You can just jump on a bicycle as well. But it's it's walkable. You can walk almost anywhere. That's there. great. I'm glad you mentioned the metro. They'll appreciate that. Uh, talk to me. Where do people get specific information on everything to do in D.C. Even on your organization? Well, Cultural Tourism D.C. publishes each week a newsletter. If you mm -hmm. go on to our site, which is culturaltourismdc.org, you can sign up for that events newsletter. It comes out every Thursday morning. Tells you everything that's going on for the next seven days related to arts, culture, history, and, and just fun, th fun things in D.C. Washington.org is Destination D.C.'s uh, website, and that is our official Convention and Visitors Bureau. There's also, uh, if you just want to do walking tours, there's WashingtonWalks.com, which is also a great site. And of course, for the Cherry Blossom Festival, there's NationalCherryBlossomFestival.org. Okay. And that's weeks of activity. Weeks of activity. So it sounds really exciting. Earlier, you were talking about the neighborhoods, and it sounded like you really wanted to emphasize this neighborhood tour or these neighborhoods that people can see. Right. Just as we begin to close, just one more plug. What's that all about again? Well, Cultural Tourism DC was founded to really help people move from the federal city to the local city. Okay. DC has over 630,000 residents. We all live in some pretty great neighborhoods. That's great. That's a good point. One of the wonderful things about these neighborhoods is, is uh, we have a lot of different cuisines and ethnic groups in our neighborhoods. We have a lot of history in our neighborhoods and humanities and great architecture. Mm. So Cultural Tourism DC really started putting walking trails. These are self-guided trails. The guidebooks are available on the website. We also have printed ones that we can send to you if you like, but it gives you an opportunity to explore Adams Morgan, Columbia Heights, U Street, even downtown DC. Uh, we'll be opening two more this year, one in Anacostia, one in another up and coming neighborhood called LaDroit Bloomingtail. And it's just a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's great to go out and do, just see the city, get Sounds to know great. the city. You've given us a lot of information. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you, it's my pleasure. Yeah. Ms. Cheryl Crow with, say the name of the organization one more time. Cultural Tourism DC. Cultural Tourism DC. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Excellence in service to the commuting public extends far beyond the traditional frontline jobs in transit. On any given day, you'll find that same dedication behind the scenes as well. On this edition of the program, we introduce you to two of MTA's best. They're in our engineering department. Meet two of MTA's top engineers, Jim Miller and Juan John Lin. Both manage special projects that keep MTA Transit operating smoothly. My name is Jim Miller. I'm chief in the civil section here at MTA in facilities engineering. Some of the projects that we've worked on will entail something as little as minor engineering 
and constructions where they're quick get in and get out type projects, maybe fixing a sidewalk, replacing or repairing a shelter, adding lighting or restoring lighting as we did recently on a project out in West Baltimore, repairing handrails or making them ADA accessible. Aside from managing the construction of facilities like the Tacoma Langley Transit Center, Jim also uses his passion for building transit at home. We constructed an enormous, what my wife describes as ridiculous, uh, train set with model road race cars in there as well. And when the grandchildren come around, we made sure that the table was high enough that they'd have to sit on somebody's lap to play with the trains until they were old enough to play with them on their own. Jim takes pride in both his family and his job. The Maryland Transit Administration is more than just putting down pavement on the ground and rolling a bus over it. We're building facilities, we're building rail systems, we're building maintenance facilities, and we're using environmentally sensitive construction methodologies that are still a growing technology and has given us an opportunity to really learn, even at my age. Wan Jang Lin has a similar role managing the preservation of rails. I'm Wan Jang Lin and I'm the manager of the uh, track and structural engineering. We handle the capital projects that's mostly related to rails, metro, light rail, uh, mark, uh, freight, and uh, mostly anything about the structures. MTA current stage, we kind of finished building stage. We are more focusing on maintaining and, and preservation. So uh, our biggest challenge right now is uh, our system start aging. We built the Metro 35 years ago, so it's reaching the life you want to start thinking about renewal or uh, at least uh, replacement. Much like the rails, Wan Jing preserves memories of the things that matter most. I'm from Taiwan, and Taiwan is a small island outside of China. Actually, I uh, came from a very small town in the rural area. It's a very peaceful place. Uh, my mom is a school teacher, and my dad was uh, like a common employee like me. I have a husband and uh, two kids. I don't have a lot of hobbies. I like to relax and just kind of read. I actually just read whatever my kids are reading. <laughs> so I read Twilight. <laughs> That's most of what I do during my free time. Wan Jang is thankful for her beautiful family and a rewarding career. If you trying to work hard, if you take initiatives, the people here are supportive. The management here, they, they would like to see you try. So that's the best way I like NTA. If you are very uh, uh, kind of ambitious, trying to grow, this is actually a place, but it's also a state agency. It provides you the stability if you look forward. So that's a good, that's why I like NTA most. Up next, an observance of Women's History Month will introduce you to a long-serving female transit employee who is making a difference in service through her professionalism and a smile. That's just ahead. Stay with us. It takes dedicated transit professionals to make MTA bus and rail service possible each and every day, not just on transit vehicles themselves, but also in other areas within the MTA system. Today, in observance of Women's History Month, we introduce you to a very dedicated, long-serving female team member who's responsible for ensuring Metro customers have the quality in-station service they deserve. Station attendant Joyce Batty joins us with a look at what she does as one of the longest serving female employees at MTA. Ms. Batty, welcome to the program. Well, thank you. It is good to see you. It is good to see you. All right, great. Longest serving MTA employees, how many years? 38. 38 years. 
38 years. Good years. 38 good years. I love that. 38 good years. So right now you're a station attendant. Of course, you didn't start there. Where did you start with the MTA? Oh, I started on the bus. I drove for 30 years. 30 years. 30 years. But all the routes, did you experience all the routes around the city? Half. Half of them? Yes, half of them. I, I worked out of um, Harford Road first. Okay. And, you know, they closed that down. Yes, they did. Uh -huh. And I went to Kirk Avenue, and that's where I retired from driving. Okay. And went to the Metro. All right, good. So, so of course, you bring a wealth of experience with bus, a lot of stories. I'm sure you have a lot oh, of bus stories yes, for us. Yes, I can tell you some stories. I'm sure, I'm <laughs> sure you can. So, you, so this snow and all this stuff, you've driven in all of that kind oh, of yes. stuff. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. All of the above. Okay. So, you switched to Metro eight years ago, and, and um, that switch must have been a choice because you could have switched oh, a yeah, long time ago. that was a choice. Okay. Just one day I decided I'm going to try the Metro. You try the Metro. Now, so at Metro, you're a station attendant. That's correct. So so have you ever driven a Metro vehicle? or No. Mm -mm. So you just do station attendant. And what does that job involve? That involved in assisting the, helping the public. Okay. Get to from point A to point B. Teaching them how to use the system basically. Okay. And teaching them how to use the TVM so they can purchase a ticket. Okay. Showing them how to get through the gates. Then showing them exactly what train is which train, like the Owens Mill train, the John Hopkins train. Just being very inform okay. informative. All right, good, because you're, you're the front line person. Because yes. persons come into a station. I can remember when I first walk, walked into a metro station, I wasn't sure, you know, which direction I was going, et cetera. So you, you provide that information. That's correct. And, that, and that's for the past eight years. Eight years. Okay, so it's Women's History Month. So females at the MTA, I would, would imagine, even when you started driving a bus, were there a number of females driving the bus? No, when I came, yeah, well, just a few. Okay. But they treated you warmly. I okay. mean, they welcomed us there. They, a lot of times they didn't have things for us, provisions for us, but they created creative provisions for us. And the company was great to work for. The men received us. All right, good. So when you say provisions, you mean locker rooms and yes, all for female? Yes, bathrooms. Okay, so, so, so they had to acquire those types of things. That's as, correct. All right, good. And and you say it's been a good 38 years. What's been good about it? What's What's been great about it? Working for the public can ha does have its ups and downs, mm -hmm. but basically it's been more up, more good. The most important thing, I met my husband there. Okay, that's a good thing. <laughs> that's a good thing, but working with the public has been great for me okay. because I'm a people person. People I'm person. I'm willing to help you. I'm willing to get you from point A to point B. That's great. I will assist you in any way I can. You know, and I think that's important. Uh, people look at the MTA. It's a large organization, a number of employees, but I think you're highlighted. A lot of the employees take a great deal of pride yes. in delivering a critical service. I mean, you think 25, 30 years ago, there are more cars now, but for some person, bus has been their mode of transportation. Right. So, so I imagine you carried some of your bus passengers for years. For years. You, you watch children grow up. Watch children grow up, watch people retire. Yes. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. It's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. All right, so um, at the Metro Station, so you're the station attendant. So, so what's some of the common messages or the common uh, instruction you have to give people at a Metro Station? Directions, directions. Uh, like like I said before, the TVM machines. Some people are not familiar with those, and so we help them get their fare, what passes, because sometimes the language can be confusing. Oh yeah. So we just help them to um, purchase a ticket. We help them to get directions. Mm -hmm. We have what you call a schedule board with all the bus lines, ah. and even little brochures to let them know of changes of anything, like how to catch a light rail how to catch a bus, what station is closer to whatever bus they need. Wow. We just try so, to. So you're telling them that don't get off at Cold Spring, get off at Milford Mill, et, et, cetera, et cetera, And I imagine the experience you have of having driven a bus is helpful also because you know that system as well. Yeah, that system as well, but there's a lot of changes in that system and we have to keep on reading and keep Make sure we're up to date to all the lines because they have three new lines coming out now. Okay. Now, now, what station do you work at specifically? Charles Center on the east and west side. Charles Center because it's probably uh, people watching us, so they're going to come up and say, Hi, Miss Betty, I saw you 
on it TV. Probably will. I, I, I saw you on TV. So now, have you always been at the Charles Center Station? I have worked all the stations. All of them. Because three times a year, we get to pick okay. different stations. So I get a chance to, we all get a chance to switch up. Oh, okay. All right. Now, um, what do you think is the most important thing? And I kind of asked this before, but what's your most important role as a station attendant? To see that people get where they need to go safely. Okay, that's great. And, and, and that's so important because I guess you have a number of regular commuters on the system. Oh, yes. Uh, we, we just uh, left the uh, director of one of the tourism directors in D.C., so people also visit Baltimore. So I guess you get people who are on the system for the very first time. Yes, and you really have to help them because they're familiar with other systems and they have a comparison, and they're so happy. They said, this is so easy. Ms. Patty, so. thank you. Thank 38 you. years, 38. thanks to you on behalf of the entire riding public. Great to have you Thank here today. Thank you for having me. Okay. Coming up next, a visit to a new Mark facility that's making a difference in Mark service. MTA is dedicated to providing customers the best service possible on its various transit modes. That includes Mark Rail, where the opening of a new rail yard is improving the efficiency of Mark service. Tawanda Carter visits the facility for a little insight into how the yard is making a difference in Mark operations. We are here not too far from Union Station in Washington, D.C. at the Mark Wedge Yard. The Wedge Yard project is an important function for the Mark train operations. I'm here today with Mark's Dave Johnson. Thank you for having us, Dave. Can you tell us a little bit more about the Wedge Yard? Yes, the Wedge Yard is a rail car storage facility located just north of Washington Union Station here in, uh, in D.C. Can you tell us the purpose of this project? The Mark Wedge Yard's purpose is to provide midday storage uh, of Brunswick and Camden Line trains. Uh, by storing them out here at the Mark Wedge Yard, they're out of Union Station. In the past, we had equipment, all equipment stored in Union Station, and there were a lot of trains, or a lot of congestion. We couldn't work on the, mechanically work on the trains during the day. We now have our own facility here, mm -hmm. uh, staffed by our contract employees that can uh, uh, repair equipment during the day, clean the equipment, uh, clean the restrooms, and again, ready the equipment for afternoon service. We save uh, storage fees and rental fees from Amtrak, and we also are able to maintain the equipment ourselves out here at the wedge yard. And I understand that this project was a project that's been around for a long time. Can you give us a little history about how long this project's yes, been around? The Wedge Yard has been under consideration or planning for probably about 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of reasons why it wasn't built over the years, budgetary constraints, uh, other concerns. Uh, but it, it got going in earnest about three years ago. Uh, construction began approximately uh, 20 months ago, and it was completed uh, back in December. The first trains came in here to the Wedge Yard on December 15th. What is the cost to have something like this built? The actual construction of the facility was approximately $22 million. Mm -hmm. uh, the grand total, when you look at engineering and uh, all the other work that had to be done, uh, uh, renting and purchasing the property from Amtrak, uh, approximately 38 to $40 million. Okay, nice, nice. And I understand that this project won a, an award recently. Yes, it did. It won the Maryland Quality Initiative's Grand Prize of the Year, the Project of the Year for, this, for the state of Maryland. Uh, this encompasses all modes of MDOT, uh, uh, all sorts of civil engineering projects, and we, we won the grand prize. So we're very proud of that, and we're very happy that uh, this uh, the Wedge Yard was recognized. Congratulations. Thank it's you. a great project. Can you tell us how many people work here at this facility? Yes, we have five employees through our contractor, Rail Plan International. Mm -hmm. uh, there are mechanics and electricians that work here to uh, maintain the equipment during the day. Okay, thank you. Thank you for mm -hmm. having us. Mm -hmm. That brings us to the end of another Commuter Connections program. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Take care.